Well guys, it seems as though tallow is having a moment. Beef tallow is the only thing that I put on my face as skincare, moisturizer, everything. It's single ingredient, it's non comedogenic meaning it won't clog your pores, and no, it does not smell like beef. I will literally never stop talking about this because beef tallow has changed my life entirely. Not only is it safe to eat, which you shouldn't do by the way, but <laughs> it's safe to eat. Unlike most other skincare brands, it's single ingredients. I've been using it every single day for months now and my skin absolutely loves it. Is there any benefit to using tallow for the skin? Like uh, people claim all sorts of benefits, anti-aging, wrinkle, I mean, and of course on TikTok, the claims get bolder and bolder because that's really just the nature of how that app works. You can't just say, oh, this is nice. Now, what exactly is tallow? Tallow is a rendered animal fat from the cooking of ruminants. Most commonly beef, but you could also have, I guess, goat tallow. It's used in cooking. Back in the day, McDonald's used to use beef tallow to fry the french fries. Gives food, you know, another level of flavor. And it sort of solidifies into this creamy compound. Looks sort of like coconut oil. Then when you pick it up with your hands, work it between your fingers, it kind of melts. Now, tallow is widely used in cooking in restaurants, but it's also widely used in uh, many skincare and cosmetics. It's been a staple ingredient actually in soap making for a long, long time. So this is not something new and novel that TikTok invented. The thing about that app is they will take things that have been around for a long time and act as though it's some like new innovative concept. What are the benefits for utilizing tallow on your skin? Like should you just start collecting it and making your own and putting it on your skin? It is frankly moisturizing. It is is very fatty. It's rich in omega-3 fatty acids. And so that can be helpful for your skin barrier. You know, your skin barrier, we always talk about it as like this brick wall where the bricks are fully differentiated, matured uh, shells of former cells called corneocytes. And they are stuck together with this lipid cement. And you have these situations where that external barrier becomes impaired either from external aggress aggressors, underlying skin conditions, or just with age, you know, we lose the ability to make good lipids in that part of the skin, or, you know, maybe an underlying nutrient deficiency. We know that applying lipids to the skin can help in restoring that and help with barrier function overall. Um, and tallow is an emollient, so it can soften and smooth the skin surface, which always has a nice cosmetic appeal to it. Anytime you put something oily on your skin, it often will give the skin this sort of radiant glow because it's smoothing everything down. And emollients can also help soften and exfoliate corneocytes that are trying to shed. You know, your skin naturally exfoliates on its own, but with age, that cellular process can kind of slow down a bit. You can get accumulation of dry, heaped up corneocytes. They can't quite get off the elevator, so to speak, and shed. You need a little bit of help. And an emollient, an oil, a fat, a moisturizer, rubbed gently on the skin, it slips between those corneocytes and helps them to lift off. So, you know, I'm always advocating, use moisturizer in your skincare routine. It really can support the vital functions of your skin. Moisturizing ingredients also help in ultimately improving water retention in the skin and that allows the enzymes that orchestrate everything to function better. Tallow is also rich in fat soluble vitamins. Fat soluble vitamins include vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. And these may have some potential benefits for the skin. Tallow also contains antioxidants and I've talked about antioxidants in a lot of my videos. Uh, you know, the, the benefit potentially of applying antioxidants to the skin is that they may help in mitigating some of the damage that occurs upon exposure to environmental aggressors. But unfortunately, you know, it's not as simple as putting antioxidants on your skin. They sort of have to be at the right place, the right time, and they have to be stable. They have to actually get into the skin. So it's a big unknown. The main drawback of using tallow is that it is not something that has preservatives in it, so you can't guarantee the stability of any of these given constituents, whether it be vitamin A, D, E, or K, or the antioxidants. 
And because there are no preservatives, you also run the risk that with time, it can go rancid, and that can be very problematic for your skin, cause irritation, skin problems, rashes, breakouts, not a good thing. Applying tallow to the skin, generally speaking, it's not unsafe to do that. Um, and you know, it's an emollient, so it softens and smooths the skin. It may help with barrier function. To what extent any of the constituents of tallow are going to truly yield skin benefit remains unaddressed by research studies. So you, when you go on TikTok, people will claim all sorts of things, you know, that it's got anti-aging properties, and they will try and extrapolate the fact that it has vitamin A and suggest, you know, that it is acting like retinol, which is not exactly true. You can't just have vitamin A there and expect it to get into your skin and act like retinol. It's just not the same thing. Um, they're very different, and so you have to keep that in mind. Not to mention the fact that you have the stability issue with this not being something where it's preserved and there's not any formulation science behind it to you know, have a delivery system for those ingredients into the skin. Skin is a barrier. So when it comes to actually delivering ingredients, they can't, it's not merely, oh, they're present, so they must be, you know, effective. It's, it's all in the formulation. And with tallow, there's no underlying formulation there, so you have no idea to what extent any of these things are gonna help you. The other drawback with using tallow, um, and what I, you know, I, to me it's like, if you want to do it, do you, but I can't, I can't understand why people would enjoy this, is it kind of has a foul odor. Uh, you know, I do not like meat, or the smell of meat nauseates me, so it kind of has a beefy aroma to it, which I find very repulsive, frankly. Now, you can go on Etsy, and there are a variety of sellers selling their tallow, and many of them add essential oils, to mask the aroma of tallow. And I've pointed this out in many videos before, but you have to be careful with essential oils. They can be very irritating to the skin. The thing about essential oils is that they can degrade and become very irritating. As they degrade, they become very inflammatory and sensitizing, and they can make you um, sensitive when you go in the sun. They can cause a rash when you go in the sun. And in, in personal care products, cosmetic products that you buy, in the store, they may have essential oils added, they may have components of essential oils added, and in those formulations, it's a lot less risky than what we're talking about here. And the reason is, again, there are preservative systems, there's a formulation behind it to uh, you know, help with the stability of those essential oil components. Whereas if you just have somebody collecting tallow um, you know, in their home or whatever and adding essential oils, you have a system where there are no preservatives to ensure the stability of that essential oil. It's very likely that it can degrade and you know, again, the tallow can go rancid. And that is really a recipe for something that can be quite irritating and inflammatory to your skin. So I would caution against that. If you're going to use this, you know, I would say it's probably better to just suck it up and do it with the plain tallow. But you know, all that to say, like, people are making a lot of bold claims about tallow, but is it really any different than any other sort of natural emollient? No. We don't have any research on people applying straight tallow to their skin in comparison to other things. I'd say a few years ago, not a few years ago, maybe like six or seven years ago, there was a coconut oil renaissance. I mean, people on social media were all about coconut oil. I mean, they were singing the praises of coconut oil for everything. Coconut oil for brushing your teeth, for shampooing your hair, for you know taking off makeup as a moisturizer, eating it, putting it in your nose, um, you know, putting it on your car seats, you name it, people were putting and ingesting coconut oil in every way, shape, or form possible. And just like tallow, it's kind of one of those things that starts out small and innocuous, and the next thing you know, people are making more and more outlandish claims about the benefits of something, which simply are not substantiated by the research. Now, just like coconut oil it has potential to moisturize the skin, soften and smooth, so does tallow. That's about where we're at. Anything above and beyond that that's being 
being stated on social media is just anecdotal hype. I would say another potential drawback in my opinion is that if you have very oily skin, you may find that this is kind of heavy. You know, it's, it's pretty greasy, it's pretty heavy. And again, you do run the risk of it going rancid, which can cause irritation to your skin. On TikTok, you know, there are some people who claim that and I find this hard to believe. They claim that they have just gotten rid of all of their skincare and the only thing they are putting on their skin is tallow. And it's kind of like, you mean to tell me you're not washing your face? I don't know. I think you gotta take these stories with a huge grain of salt. Let me know in the comments though, are you using tallow on your skin? What, you know, what has been your experience with it? And no, it does not smell like beef. The one she's using has scent added, has essential oil added. She says that in the comments. I'm not talking about this because beef tallow has changed my life entirely. Not only is it safe to eat. I mean, this fascination with eating our skincare, <laughs> This is something that the wellness community likes to state, but it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, if you wouldn't eat it, why would you put it on your skin? Well, a lot of things that we eat are not good to put on the skin. They're very irritating. And just because it's not something that you would want to ingest, doesn't mean that it's necessarily harmful for your skin. I mean, the skin is a barrier, so it is not going to get into your body like it would if you were ingesting it. It's just, yeah. All right, let's go to the comments section. <laughs> Beef tallow broke me out so bad as an acne prone person. I mean, it happens with, it can happen, that can happen with anything, but you know, like I said, maybe it, you know, it can go rancid and that makes it more likely. Consider me influenced. Does this hurt the cow, someone asked? Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Love beef tallow, but I'd avoid eyelids because it gives me milia when I put it there. Everyone's different though. Milia, you know, it's kind of this misconception that moisturizers cause milia. Milia are actually little cysts that form, usually uh, due to damage of the underlying supportive structures of the skin, like after, you know, maybe an aggressive microdermabrasion or extensive sun damage. Putting moisturizer on the skin really should not elicit milia. I think some people confuse milia with, you know, maybe closed comedones. What do people think we used as a moisturizer before the invention of concoctions? We used naturally found oil. That appeals to the, you know, ancestral fallacy, like just because it was used by our ancestors, it must be the best thing ever. But remember, they had all sorts of health problems that they had to deal with that we have since eradicated. They died much younger than we do. They had a lot more physical and emotional struggles than we do today, a lot more things to deal with. They probably just used it because that was what was available. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. I mean, we like to think that we have advanced, so I don't know why you would wanna to regress to things that are just not as good. I love to season my cast iron skillet with it. Where can you buy this? Do you wear SPF? Yeah, do not rely on tallow as an SPF. There's no sunscreen in it. Literally the only thing I can put on my face, I have the most sensitive skin. A lot of people here just singing the praises of eating it. Beef tallow is very high in saturated fat, so not the most heart healthy thing to be consuming. In fact, I think it's higher in saturated fat than lard. What do you wash your face? with? Good question. Is it good for oily skin? Again, I, it's not going to cause your skin to make more oil, but it probably will feel greasy, especially if you have oily skin. Lots of people asking about sunscreen, not getting a response there. Can you put makeup over it? Makeup might not set up well on it, like any kind of emollient that's really oily on the skin surface can disrupt the setup of your makeup. Is it fungal acne safe? Pterosporum folliculitis. It's just commonly, you know, in the public referred to as fungal acne, but it's really just a um, folliculitis due to that little yeast malassezia that lives on everyone's skin. It's an immune response against that and happens in the follicle. I have lots of videos on this. Really, really oily cosmetics may aggravate that for some people and you know, perhaps that is the case here, but fungal acne safe versus unsafe, I mean, there's nothing about an ingredient or formulation that really predicts that per se. The police are outside for you. Do you know if it will help with rosacea? Um, so for rosacea, you know, there is a part of rosacea that's due to an impaired skin barrier. That's part of what, you know, 
aggravates the sensitivity symptoms, the burning, the stinging. And so moisturizers are a really important part of rosacea care, but heavy moisturizers actually can, because they you know, slow down the evaporation of sweat, they can make someone feel overheated, and that can actually precipitate a rosacea flare. So this may be that kind of issue. So tallow, because it is kind of heavy, might actually aggravate rosacea, but everyone's rosacea it's very different, so there's that. All right, guys, that's what I wanted to say about tallow. Again, let me know in the comments if this is something that you have tried out, if you have any interest in. I hope this video was informative to you. Now, on the end slate, I'm going to link my recent video reacting to the TikTok carrot tanning trend. You're definitely gonna wanna watch that one next if you like these types of videos where I go in and you know, react to TikTok skincare trends. But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.